Okay, hello. We are going to uh, video today a case of coronary sinus reducer implantation. I'm here with Dr. Bazan. Uh, come closer to me so they'll be able to see you too. Uh, after puncturing the right jugular vein with a nine French sheath, ultrasound guided puncture, we took a, a six French diagnostic multipurpose catheter, we went into the right atrium and we measure uh, mean pressure. Mean pressure was 11, so we can go ahead and proceed with the uh, procedure. Uh, if the mean pressure would have been 15 or higher, we would abort uh, the procedure. But since it was less than 15, we continue. The next step is that I take a 10 ml lower lock syringe with full contrast, hook it up to the multipurpose catheter and try to engage the ostium of the coronary sinus. The way I do that is I come looking at the screen when I'm at 30 degrees LAO. Uh, I'm going with the catheter from 11 o'clock on the screen to 5 o'clock, giving little tests, trying to cross the vertebra and try to see. If I see a lot of VPCs, it means that I'm in the right ventricle. So here is the coronary sinus. I go only with the catheter, without, uh, without a wire at this point. I'm rotating my syringe and try to gently go deep into the coronary sinus. I try not to go into small branches. If the tip of the catheter goes to small branches, <coughs> I go back change the angulation and go ahead deep inside. If it doesn't go, then I can use the wire. So here we are. I'll try to go to the great cardiac vein, which is about 12 o'clock. I cannot do it, so I will take a wire to advance the catheter. Give me a J wire, please. We take a long J wire. Go up through the diagnostic multipurpose catheter to the great cardiac vein, which is at 12 o'clock, and then advance the catheter to that level. Okay, now I take the wire out, and I'm going to do the first angiography of the coronary sinus. Before I inject, I always take a small test just to see that I'm not in a small branch. The tip of the catheter is not in a small branch, so I won't inject forcefully and break it. If I'm not, I'm taking a full angio. Very nice. What we see is a nice looking coronary sinus. Up at 12 o'clock is the great cardiac vein. Down below at 6 o'clock, by the ostium of the coronary sinus, is a branch, two branches actually, draining the right coronary artery. We will implant right on this valve where you see the narrowing in the coronary sinus. That's where we will implant. David, can you do QCA on this, please? Yes. Um, if possible, it's always good to implant on a valve because uh, if you do, you can have the valve already cover the struts of the, corner of the reducer and you have a narrowing right away. Okay, the QCA shows that the diameter of the coronary sinus is between uh, six, se eight and seven millimeters. We know that QCA underestimates uh, the diameter by 20 to 30 percent. So it's around eight millimeters in diameter. Uh, we will take the intervertebral disc right. The intervertebral disc right uh, at the narrowing, against the narrowing, as our bony marker. You see this intervertebral disc, which is right against the narrowing, the valve in the coronary sinus. This will be our bony marker. So now we are ready to start implantation. Uh, Gilly, please give heparin. 
Uh, what we do next is I insert back the uh, wire into the diagnostic catheter and take out the catheter. The wire is going in, catheter is coming out. I try to keep the half circle shape configuration of the catheter and the wire at all times. If I see a little belly or a big belly in the right atrium, it means I'm pushing too much and I have to pull back. So I flush the wire. And now we'll open the equipment. Gilly, please. Guiding catheter, reducer. Uh, I will get the indeflator ready. The indeflator will be filled with 20% uh, contrast. I take 2 ml of contrast and fill it to 10 ml with saline. Only 20% contrast. Put it in a 20 ml. Lua lock syringe and suck it all in. Suck it all into the indeflator. So now I have the indeflator with a stopcock, three way stopcock at the end, filled with 20% contrast and 80% saline. We have the Acuity Pro catheter, which is a dedicated catheter for coronary sinus. I flush the catheter out and in. One very important step is to break the one-way valve. Uh, so when I insert the reducer, we, we will have as minimal friction as possible. So we break it several times with this green dilator. Next step is the reducer. We take it out of its protective plastic tube. The reducer comes with a distal metal mandrain which I take out and a plastic cover which I take out. I check that the reducer is well located between the markers <coughs> and I also flush the lumen of the reducer, the delivery system, and we put it aside. It is ready now to go. <coughs> so we have the indeflator, <coughs> we have the reducer, we have the guiding catheter. <coughs> we take the multipurpose again. We insert the multipurpose inside the guiding catheter. So we go telescope technique or mother and child. So the multipurpose is much longer, so it extends out of the tip of the guiding, and I'm taking the multipurpose, put it back on the wire. I will go in with the multipurpose deep into the coronary sinus, over the wire as far as I can go, and then we will telescope the guiding catheter on the multipurpose and the wire. In case you don't have it, uh, good support, you can take instead of a regular J wire, a supracore wire. And then you have a better support if the guiding catheter refuses to go into the coronary sinus. So now Sami gives some tension on the wire while I'm inserting the multipurpose. We always have to look at the nice half a circle configuration in the right atrium. So now I'm going in with the multipurpose. The way to go in is not to push, just to rotate and go slowly in while rotating. I'm going as far as I can go into the great cardiac vein. Now Sami holds the multipurpose and the wire and I'm come advancing with the guiding. And I try to go with the guiding further to where I want to implant. And leave multipurpose in. If I'm not going to still in. Show me more. Correctly. Let's look at the original angio. 
Yeah. So, yeah, that's good. Now the guiding is distal to where I want to implant. Sami will take out the multipurpose, take the multipurpose out, and we are left with the wire and with the guiding distal to where we want to implant. We will need the multipurpose later at the end. So we flush the wire, we flush in and out the multipurpose, and we are ready for implantation. Next step is to take the reducer. Again, make sure that it is well located between the markers. Put it over the wire. Try not to hold on the reducer, just on the shaft, on the balloon. As soon as Sami gets the end of the wire, he gives me some tension on the wire while I go gently here without friction into the catheter and advance the reducer until the level of the right atrium. There I stop. I stop here. I always stop here and take a cine. The purpose of this is to make sure that the reducer hasn't moved between the markers. If the reducer has moved between the markers, we will take the guiding and the reducer out and start over again. Just leave the wire in. So now we're connecting the indeflator. We are not going negative. I'm going with the reducer to the site of implantation within the guiding. This is exactly where I want to implant. The next step is that I will withdraw the guiding to the dis most proximal marker, and then Sami will inflate to four atmospheres. Ready, Sami? One motion of the guiding, and never let the guiding go back forward because it will remove the reducer and push it off the balloon. So this is the way it is done. Guiding going back, with one motion, inflate, Sami. Inflation, very good, exactly where we wanted it, four atmospheres, Satkoev, okay, five, five. Now, when the balloon is fully inflated, I will inject some contrast to see that we are oversized enough. Go higher. Almost to six. This is a little painful. Okay. Okay, so we, we wait 40 seconds and then we deflate. Okay, deflation is important because the balloon is very bulky and we don't want the balloon while trying to withdraw the balloon, we don't want the wings of the balloon to take the reducer backwards with us. So we deflate the balloon three times. I completely empty now the indeflator and deflate again. And what I also do, I flush the guiding catheter with saline to get rid of the sticky contrast. We do another two deflations. Deflate. Still contrast and saline is coming out. I'll take a scene just to see the location of the reducer. This is good, exactly where we wanted it. You see the markers of the balloon and the wire at the tip of the wire, the J part, is up in the great cardiac vein. We'll do the last inflation. And now that the balloon is empty, I hope, we will close the three-way stopcock towards the patient and get rid, take away the indeflator. And now comes the hardest part of the procedure. 
I will pull out the balloon, trying to pull it out without moving the reducer with me. To do that, what I'll do is with my left hand, I will push a little bit the guiding catheter so it advances to the narrow neck of the reducer, support the reducer. And with my right hand, I will push the, uh, pull the balloon out while Sami here is... Uh, his responsibility is to get, uh, leave the wire in place. Don't let us lose the wire. Okay? Ready, we ready, Sami? Here we go. Balloon is coming out. Guiding is going in. Support the reducer. Push on the wire, Sami. Push on the wire. Push more. Push more on the wire. That's it. By pushing on the wire, we can... We can... Uh, when we don't need the guiding to be in the reducer anymore, we can push on the wire so the tip of the guiding is going backwards. So now Sami is taking out the balloon. Okay, balloon is out. We will flash the wire, and then we will take again the multipurpose, go over the wire through the neck of the reducer, distal to the coronary sinus, take the wire out and uh, take our final angio shot. So I'm going with it multi-purpose over the wire. Sam is holding the wire, giving some tension on the wire. You can, you can insert the wire a little bit more, Sami. Okay, that's good. So I'm going in, the multi-purpose comes, and I will go through the reducer up in the coronary sinus, you can take the wire out, wire is out, and we can take our final shot. Again, as always, before I take a shot, I check that I'm not in a small branch. The tip of the catheter, as it is now, it is in a small branch, so I withdraw a little bit, and I'm free in the lumen, I take the injection. Okay, you see very nice results, why? because we implanted it over a valve, so we have the narrowing right away. We have oversizing of the reducer at both ends, which will induce tissue proliferation and covering of the struts, but usually you don't see this narrowing right away because blood and contrast is flowing around the struts. Here we see the narrowing right away because we implanted on a valve. So this is nice. It, uh, potentially will enable the patient to feel better right away. Usually it takes six to eight weeks until the struts and the reducer are covered with tissue and the pressure gradient across is, is established. Here we might have a pressure gradient right away. So now the last stage is to pull back all the system under CNA and make sure that the reducer is well located in the place as I do now. And we are done. That's the end of the procedure. Very nice results. Thank you, Sami. See, I'm not.